A local beekeeper inherited this hive maybe a year ago, maybe a little bit more, and they've asked me to come and look at it. And it's, of course, a Langstroth. Well, it's what I call a narrow Langstroth. I think it holds, is it six or seven high, uh, frames? I'm not sure. I always get confused with Langst Langstroths because they seem to come in so many different sizes. Um, but it, on the top of it, so it's got three, um, three, three boxes uh, plus a flow, flow hive on the top, flow super on the top. And um, somewhat inevitably, this wooden door thing on the, on the flow hive is kind of jammed up um, and won't open easily, but we'll have to leave that open gently and see what's what inside there. Now, we're well into, well, at the end of the season, it's, um, it's the end of October, so it's well into ivy season. And of course, as I've mentioned in my other flow hive videos, ivy is uh, the big enemy of the flow hive because it crystallizes really quickly. Um, for those of you who don't live in Europe, um, ivy is uh, heterohelix. It grows up trees. It uses, it uses trees for support. I can't see any uh, quickly and easily. There's probably some on that oak tree there. Uh, oh, that's right. There's loads on that tree right in front of me. And that tree over there. So there's, there's some bags of apples over here. And I will just get a close-up of the ivy for the benefit of those of you who've never seen it before. Um, because it only grows in Britain and Europe, as far as I'm aware. It doesn't grow in the USA. Um, so a lot of American viewers won't understand the problem that ivy causes. Because what happens is that it... It comes in as a, as a liquid nectar, of course, as usual, um, but then it crystallizes really, really quickly, like within days, very often, and it sets really, really hard. Um, it turns into, what, well, what the Americans would describe as hard candy, and therefore, if it gets into a flow super or flow frame, it's going to jam the works up something horrible. And so, clearly, it's a good idea to remove... Um, any flow equipment before the ivy season starts and that was a subject of my previous one of my previous videos and, and some people didn't understand what I was getting at they thought I was just um, you know ma making a whole mess of it but in fact what I was trying to the point I was trying to get across was that in in this country and in elsewhere in Europe you've really got to remove flow supers before the ivy season because if you don't you're never going to get that honey out of there again ever uh, unless you sort of melt it out with hot water or something it certainly is not going to flow out of the super so anyway i'm gonna just pause the video uh, for a moment and uh, i'm gonna try attempt to lever this this door open and see what we make so in fact this um this door here is not too difficult to remove one of the knobs has come loose uh, but the other one's okay so we can kind of pop it out I don't have a full-size tripod with me otherwise I'd be using that right now there we go so there's the usual uh, earwigs now you'll be um, those of you who had a go at me last time about not putting the metal strip in will be happy to hear that there does look like um, a metal strip in here, which is doing its job of keeping bees out of the um, this accessible part of the hive. So, so we're just looking at the uh, varroa board at the moment to see what the mite drop is. There's quite a lot of varroa on there. You won't have to see in this camera, but we're using a close range binoculars to have a look at them, which is always interesting. Your um, veil is right in front of the lens. It's, I don't think you're going to see anything through that. <laughs> Are they moving? Oh, it's they, they won't be moving because they're dead. Okay. That's... Um, no, you're looking for red, so rusty, well, rust, dark, darkish red 
oval shapes and they, they will be di slightly different colours. The, the, the youngest ones are, are pretty much white and then they get darker and darker as they get older. Can you see them? I'm not sure that I've There's I've one there, right at the end of that little stalk. So that's that size? Yep. Oh my god. About two, two and a half millimetres. Oh my god, okay. There were quite a few over here. There's there's a couple there, a lighter, slightly lighter colour. There's there's a number over here. Okay, so it's a, that big thing. I was looking, I was thinking it was much smaller than that. Okay. No, they're quite visible, oh. even with a naked eye. So so last week you tried to extract tried to one extract of them. Well, Which that one? That one and that one. Oh, okay, right. Um, but I couldn't get. But nothing else. came out. Well, no. okay. The reason for that is. Almost certainly there's nothing in there. Because right. um, if you look through the window and the side here, you can see all those cells are open. Right. And in fact, worse than that, uh, well, pr probably what you've done is leave them in the open position. Okay. Whereas you should have closed them up. So I think that would be the first thing to do okay. would be to close those. So you need to put the lever in the, the lower slot. Okay, so something to, to say is that, that normally bees will fill... Uh, any combs from the centre outwards. So, if you if you um, if you wanted to extract at all, I would do it from the from the middle two first. Okay, um, because the well, this, that's the reason I assume is why they put the window um, here. Well, obviously, where else would you put it, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the the thing with having a window here is that it only gives you information about this end comb. Yeah. Right, but. Just because the end comb is not capped, it doesn't necessarily mean that the centre combs are or are not capped. It, it tells you nothing about the centre combs, actually, except that if this one is capped, then you can be pretty sure the others are as well. That, that's, the, that's the clue. Um, the fact is that you've attempted to extract some stuff from here, and in fact, obviously, well, it certainly appears like there was nothing in it in the first place. So um, it may be that they, because they're on... Um, total of four boxes they've probably uh, managing quite happily with their bottom three and they're not really fussed about what goes on in the top one um, or it may be in fact that they put honey into the center frames up here so we, we'll find that out in a minute but I think the first thing to do is to reset the two outer ones which are presumably the ones you okay so yeah. that's taking this off so you can take that out right, which is it. just basically brute force uh, or well the roof may need to come off on it, I'm not sure. It. Maybe it does. It the, uh, no, no, no. No? Oh, okay. Right, you've done that. So you need the, the magic key. Do you have? Yeah. Um, okay, I, I think that to me looks like the open position. Yeah. So what did you do first time round? Did you do it that way I or did, did you do it? I did that. That's what I did first. And then after I opened this and left it for quite a while with a yeah. with a with a, a little um, a little thing in whatever you call this. No, there's nothing coming out there and it, it definitely would if there was gonna be anything to come out because it looks like a gap there. That looks like a gap where stuff could leak down into the That's what that other one does as well, but isn't that where the huh. little Tube thing. Ah, oh, mm, possibly. Yeah. So when okay. You put, when you put this in, that's where it goes. That's where this. this right. Right. That goes in there. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So it's all right, B. I'm not. Yeah, there's a bee trying to trying to get through that tiny gap. What it's doing. So that's what I did. La I did that, and right. then I waited for a long time. Went away. Okay. Left it. Nothing. And then when I came back, I. You went reset to the it. Top. I went okay. The top. Okay. In that case, I must be wrong. I must have it upside down. So, if you I go into the top, turn a few turn that way. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. That's better. Right. Okay. I was wrong first time round. It's the top one that resets it to its cell shape. So you need to do that all the way down, and we can watch it happening through the window here. There we go. So you can actually see the action of the lever. There we 
we go. Okay, so that's what they should look like. They should look like cells, um, and they now they do. Right, so that's something I must remember. The top one is the one that resets it to its cell pattern. And apparently, you can't put that little thing back in. Which and little thing? The, the little. Um, the little oh, the the cut the. the Cap, right. Cap. Okay. You can't put the cap back in unless you've right, done right. it right. Okay. That's what it said on the. Gotcha. On the video. Yeah, I must learn to read instructions. I'm very bad at that. Well, I am too. <laughs> I I like learning from people. Yeah, me. yeah. Oh, it's much better, isn't it? I find. So shall we try the other? Well, ones? we could certainly try the, one of the middle ones. Yeah, take your pick, and and let's try one of those and see if anything happens. Because if anything's going to be capped, it will be one of those two. Right. That's a long way for honey to be in the air, <laughs> for bees to come and find it. But anyway, we'll see. Maybe there was another way to do it, but, uh, but so the numbering guy from the left, we're doing number four. The guy on the on the video, he um he had a little. Well, that does seem to be something that in need of, well, I don't know, in need of improvement perhaps is, is some kind of a manifold. So you can put all of the, all six of those in at once, like, you know, tubes in, and then connect them all together with a manifold and then take them into one container. So that way you don't have to do each one in turn, which means that you're cutting down on the time that it's exposed to, to bees oh, no, considerably. It should go right to the end, but in fact, that I'm told um, by by my time. people who watch my video that, that you should do it in increments. Okay. Right. Okay, bees, we're just seeing what you're up to. We're not going to take all your honey. Bees are starting to notice that there's something going on here. So you're right at I'm the end away. now, okay, so that one theoretically is fully open in its draining position. And now we're looking for I can see some sign of honey coming down. Is that just my imagination? <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing it. <laughs> now, the problem with not knowing whether it's sealed or not, of course, is that we don't know what the water content is going to be because if you try to store honey with too much water in it like upwards of you know 18 percent or so um, then it does tend to ferment and of course that can blow the lids off jars and cause all kinds of mayhem um, so when you can't see and this isn't something else I pointed out in the uh, video um, was that you can't actually see um, whether or not the, the, the honey is capped on those central frames um, uh, without actually lifting a frame out, which, which isn't ideal. So really, you've got to rely on this window as your indicator, uh, but that only tells you about the end frame. We can see now there's a load of bees have figured out that, um, yes, it's cell-shaped again, and they're inside there, I guess, well, who knows, cleaning out, I guess. They're trying to reconstruct, probably. They're, I guess they're trying to um, seal up the uh, the edges of the cells where they've been broken by the mechanism. And um, it smells lovely. You can smell the uh, mixture of oh, yeah. wax and yes, indeed. But so it's very uh, slow. <laughs> it's very very slow. Yeah, I, I did I did say that it could be better named as a trickle hive. Well, it might in this, um, where you said on your last video about um, um, them going for uh, ivy flowers, that mm, whereas they wouldn't do that in a hot climate, would they? So no, indeed, it, indeed. It, it and may be a bit more solid. That's, yeah. Or, I don't know, well, maybe like you said, that they're doing other things down here. Absolutely. I mean, we don't know, but we can surmise from the fact that um, this end one isn't cat. We can surmise that they haven't filled the entire um, set of frames. Well, in fact, you know that because you tried to get honey out of the end ones and you didn't. So it's there's a good chance that they have filled these other boxes first with um, with summer nectar, 
and they haven't actually got around to, to putting honey into the uh, into the flow box to any extent. So there's, there's a little gap there where bees are squeezing through just to say hello, I guess, and there's a spider come along, or a dirty long legs, or whatever it is. Um, something else that was pointed out to me multiple times on the on the last video was that there's an adjustment <coughs> somewhere on those um, flow flow uh, frames to adjust the distance between the well before and aft um, distance uh, uh, that's something else of course I should have read up on and, and learned before it's a bee trying to get me um, I should have uh, boned up on that before I uh, before I open, attempted to open it, but of course I didn't. Being allergic to instruction manuals. <laughs> Still very, very so yeah. basically, nothing's happening here. There's no. there's 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 nothing coming out of there. Well, let, let's just take that. You know, and there's not it's not even wet at the end, so so we we can be pretty damn sure that there's nothing in there. Um, well, okay, now this, this brings a question, of course, because if you do nothing, if you leave it as it is now, um, the bees are going to fill that. If they fill it at all, they're going to fill it with ivy, because that's all there is now until spring, or till, yeah, till early spring. Um, ivy is still in flower. It goes on flowering until, um, well, it runs out of steam, really, and that can be as late as mid-December some, some years. Uh, we've already had a frost or two this year, uh, but that doesn't seem to stop the ivy flowering. So it could go on for another month. Um, in which case, if they, I mean, this is a pretty big colony. You know, there's bees all the way up through four boxes. Um, if they get busy on the ivy and pack that flow box full of ivy, um, you've got a problem getting it out because it's going to crystallise and it's going to go like Blackpool Rock. And that was the thing I brought up in that video, is that, and that's a, a unique problem to, uh, well, Britain and Europe, should we say, because ivy doesn't grow in, um, in, in the Americas or anywhere else, as far as I'm aware. Um, so if you end up with a flow hive full of ivy honey, you ain't never going to get it out by, any, by, by the means you know, they intend you to, which you turning the tap, because it won't flow. It's literally not a liquid. And so the only way of getting it out would be, I guess, to um, to heat the the, the, the frames in um, hot water or hot air, and and and, get, and melt it out that way, which which would be a pain in the what's it as a minimum. Um, and I have never tried it, and I really would rather not, <laughs> to be honest, because it doesn't sound like fun to me. Um, so the risk is that if you leave that in place, they're going to fill it with ivy. And then it's just going to become immovable blocks of um, ivy honey. So uh, my personal preference, if it were mine, would be to take that box off and just let them run on these three boxes, which is more than plenty for the winter. In fact, you know, you could easily take another box off as well. But as it's such a big colony, probably, you know, they would appreciate the space of having those three boxes until spring. So it's your shout, really. You can either, you know, leave it as it is, take the risk of it, getting clogged up with ivy and then you have to deal with that problem um, or we take it off and uh, just let them have the run of the rest of the hive it sounds like a plan <laughs> seeing as I don't know really what to do it sounds like well sure um, I think I should try that one I By all means, yeah, yeah, go, go for it. Yeah, put the reset. I would, I would reset that one, and uh, so we'll, we'll try the other one. Friendliest of bees. Um, well, this has got a, a lip that's been added, and I don't think that's part of the original equipment. Um, it's been added over the to cover the gap. Right. 
Well, not that there should be a gap, but it's been, you know, that's, that's what it appears to be. Um, which is going to make it difficult because you can't get the, the hive tool in there. So we'll have to do it from the back. Okay, so what's got to happen is that the crown board needs to go. Right, so what I'm going to do is take that, lift that off, and you want me to put this on top of the other. It does, it does drive them down a little bit, actually. But the, the guard bees at the front are, are definitely not um, on our side in this. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to lift this box. I'm going to lift this box, put it down there. You need to get that on top of, there. On top of this, okay. fairly sharpish. Okay. Yeah. Okay, bees. It looks like the um, queen food is going to come with me. So, okay, you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Up. <laughs> Once you get to the point where you want to empty one of these boxes, <laughs> um, <clears throat> another day. Then um, <laughs> that's the time to adjust that. Okay. So, is there a time when it's um, better? Do it. I mean, would it be better to do it at night or something like that? No. Okay. Never open a beehive at night. Okay. <laughs> um, reason being that bees won't fly at night, they, they, they won't fly in the dark, but they will crawl and you'll end up with bees literally all over you. And um, given that these bees aren't the friendliest. Do you want me to spray you? Huh? Wait, wait till I finish here and then. then We'll do that. Yeah, these bees weren't at all happy at being disturbed. They really attack cameras. Whether it's because they're black or because they're just... I don't know. Whether they can feel the... Um, Heat coming off the more, I just don't know what Not, it's not encouraging, is it, really, for uh, beekeepers when you get bees like this? It's... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely not keen on humans. Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay, we'll call that a day.